Hi, my name is Denise Anderson. I'm here today to demonstrate Maricopa County inspection from the view of the owner operator and from the inspector themselves. So let's get started. When an inspector visits your location, the documentation they're going to be asking for is your C operator certificate, your daily compliance checklist, and any annual testing paperwork. If staffing permits, your store manager should accompany the inspector during the inspection process. When conducting your UST inspection, or commonly referred to as your Stage 1 inspection, safety is of the utmost importance. Make sure you have cones, safety vests, gloves, and in some cases you may want to use your vehicle as a barrier between you and the customer. Okay, let's get started with our spill containment bucket inspection. First off, you'll open the lid. When opening the lid, you want to be mindful of any vapor haze, vapor smell, or hissing sound. That indicates that there's a leak in your spill containment bucket. When conducting your fill spill bucket inspection, pull your cap off, check your gasket, shake the cap, stays in place. Snap the cap back on and do your turn inspection. The cap and the adapter must turn together, not independently. If, if that happens and your cap is bad, or your fill adapter is loose from the riser. Take the cap back off. You must have an ID band signifying what grade is delivered to this tank. Inspect your drain. It must be straight up and down and sealed. If it's not sealed, you'll have, hear the hissing noise. Next, check your buckets for any cracks, dents, or holes. If there's any holes in the containment bucket, the bucket is non-compliant. If there's any liquid or debris, it must be wiped out. Simply take a towel, removing any liquid or debris. If you have a large amount of liquid, then you must use a secondary five gallon bucket filled with kitty litter. You'll remove the liquid using a siphon pump such as this utilizing the suction pump to remove the water into your bucket. Once you removed all the liquid out of the bucket, then you'll simply let the kitty litter air dry. Once it's dried out, you can dump it into a plastic bag, double bag it, and throw it away in your dumpster. Return your ID band. Snap on your cap. And your inspection is completed. <laughs> Okay, I showed you how to do your fill spill containment bucket. Now let's look at your vapor recovery bucket. You remove the lid as before. Remove your orange cap, check for your gasket. Must be in place. Shake the cap, the, cap must stay, the gasket must stay with the cap. Inspect your vapor recovery poppet by checking to make sure that this area is sealed. Push, that's open. If you hear that noise, your vapor recovery vapor break is bad. Simply replace the cap, snap it on, and generate a work order. Inside the bucket, you have a vapor break. Again, you'll take the cap, install, snap on, and do your turn check. Again, the vapor adapter must not move separately from the cap or spin from the riser. Remove your ID band. Make sure it's legible. Clean the sidewalls of your bucket, ensuring no liquid and or debris. Replace your ID band. Inspect your drain. It must be straight up and down. On your vapor bucket, you may or may not have a drain. It's not required on your vapor side. Pressure vacuum valves typically can be located freestanding next to your tank field, next to your garbage can enclosure, on top of your canopy, and sometimes even alongside the building. All you have to do is look for them. Don't try to climb or get up on top of your canopy. It's unsafe. The inspector will conduct a drop tube inspection. This inspection consists of measuring the drop tube in four different positions and measuring from the bottom of the tank to the top of the fill adapter. At no point will the measurement be larger than six inches from the bottom. To explain the drop tube measurement just a little bit more, the five points of measurements are gonna be from the bottom of the tank, then you're slowly gonna slide your tape measure up to grab four different points on the drop tube, and at no time 
can any of these measurements be more than six inches off the bottom of the tank. Once the inspection is completed, whether witnessed or unwitnessed, documentation must be signed by the owner-operator.